guys how are you this is um the new moon solar eclipse reading it is for the collective of all signs so the new moon is going to be at 249 at its peak 249 p.m that's eastern time so you want to check your local listings um on wednesday october 2nd um, so today, as I'm bringing this to you on October 1st, is the last day before the new moon eclipse. So you want to be thinking about what you want to attract into your life, right? It's when we're setting intentions. Wait for, wait for it to peak before you set intentions. Um, so what do you need to release in order to make space for all this newness? And because it's happening in the sign of Libra, it is all about relationships. And because it's an annular solar eclipse, it is supercharged, okay? So this is the big one, and we wanna pay attention to it. I am gonna start by pulling from Moonology Manifestation. Let's just get some energy around, maybe what we're releasing. Um, and I know release is usually full moon, right? But it's an eclipse, and it's about stuff from the past that we have to let go of. So let me see. And we want to set intentions around that, right? So that it gets out of the way of the relationships we're trying to um, co-create. All right, here we go. This is time stamped for your convenience. Ooh, know your worth. Huge. We were talking about all about that for the last two weeks. Assess the situation. How Virgo, right? First quarter moon in Virgo. Very Virgo in. We just left Virgo season. And be proud of yourself. <laughs> yeah, we have two Taurian uh, messages here. Know your worth and be proud of yourself. So I sort of love that. Um, we do have energies in um, the cosmos right now in the sign of Taurus. So I love this. Uh, know your worth, assess the situation and be proud of yourself. Yeah, because as you're setting intentions for what you need to release, it's messy and gnarly. And yeah, the um, what I'm going to cover next is all about the energies of this particular new moon and the eclipse. Um, if you have not watched the latest series of readings, it was a shadow series. It was about looking at past relationships and the lessons that have been sort of building up over time and then the baggage we've been carrying and what we need to let go of and where the blocks are and then how to forgive ourselves or the other and then you know where we need to work on some self-love so the, the absolutely most of the messages had a little question about the stories we're telling ourselves and that we're sort of internalizing that um, you know, where we take hits to our sense of self-worth and value and how to be and assess the situation like in real time and in a reality-based way. Um, and then be proud of yourself because it is not easy to do this work. So that is the Oracle and it's so perfect because Taurus is the other Venus rules, ruled sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so that it's a Libra moon, which is Venus ruled, makes that like perfection. So let me tell you about this um, moon. This is time stamp, so we're going into the astrology portion. The solar eclipse is falling in a new moon in Libra. Um, and this eclipse is hitting us right as we get the month started on the second. As I said, I'm looking at my notes here. So we're setting intentions for better relationships and that elusive balance that Libra brings. But Black Moon Lilith is exactly conjunct, meaning kind of holding hands, um, this new moon. So the whole lunation itself and the entire lunar cycle that it kicks off, meaning for the next six months till we get to the full moon in Libra six months from now, um, has some guaranteed shadow work in store. And that is why, I got a wild hair, guys. That is why I did the shadow <laughs> spread this past two weeks. Um, so it's also a south node eclipse. I think I said for a few readings that it was a north node. It's not, it's a south node eclipse. So that's why we're focusing on releasing the past. Now, does it all make sense? Okay, 
So um, I want to read like a new moon reflection that really beautifully addresses the Aries Libra opposition because Aries is the opposite Libra on the natal chart, um, on the zodiac chart, wheel, whatever. Okay, so here's a, a reflection. It says, past relationships teach me valuable lessons about myself. So I'm going to repeat that again. Past relationships, relationships is Libra, teach me valuable lessons about myself. Myself is Aries. So this really illustrates the need to balance the tension between independence and connection, the me versus the we. All right, so if you wanna write that down, past relationships teach me uh, it, valuable lessons about myself. And that was that whole spread I did. If you missed it, go back and watch it. For I did one for each sign, okay. So now uh, in the solar eclipse chart, if you pull the chart for the eclipse, there is a grand water trine. A trine looks like a triangle, okay? It's, a, it's very beautiful, supportive energy. Um, and the trine is between Mars in the sign of Cancer, so grand water, all the water signs. Venus is in Scorpio and Saturn is in Pisces. And this grand water trine sort of beautifully contextualizes these ideas, right? Of how we learn lessons um, from relationships. So when all three water signs interact through Mars, Venus, and Saturn, we have the opportunity to determine what belongs to us versus what belongs to them. And then what is kind of shared between us. Um, so this is very much in the spirit of Libra, where the scales, right, if you look at Libra has the scales as their um, iconography, and even in Tarot, the Justice card is Libra, and she holds the sword in, of truth in one hand and the scales of balance in the other, right? Where the scales hold multiple truths, not to prioritize one over others, but to honor all equally right what's fair let's level the playing field where can we strike some balance and harmony so this eclipse has a square to is in a square to mars and you've always seen me whenever i say square i do this um, so that you understand a square is like where the wall meets the floor and it's sort of immovable it's a struggle usually and in this case this eclipse is square to mars and cancer which is a very soft water sign, a very sort of, there's some vulnerability there and Mars is not comfy in Cancer. So it suggests we have to take some more responsibility for our emotional states. Um, recognizing what's ours to feel and heal and not really lay it at the feet of someone else. In this case, for this new moon and eclipse, we are taking responsibility um, instead of someone made me feel thus and so, it's like, I am feeling a thing. It belongs to me. It, it's mine to heal. So keep that in mind. Um, and as this is the third and final Libra eclipse until 2033, that is nine years away, folks, there is an urgency to seize this moment. Now, when I was reading about this, I saw the word gentle a bunch of times. I'm not feeling that it's gentle because I don't know about you, but I don't want to be holding on to a lot of this crap for nine more years so that when 2033 rolls around, I still have all this crap that I didn't sense the urgency to release now so that I keep going through the same drama scapes in relationships for nine more years? Thank you, no, mm -mm. hard pass. So I sort of want to reframe it for you. The time is now. The urgency of the moment is here. To seize this moment, allow it to transform the way we hold paradox and opposition, not as problems requiring a single solution, that's not what we're saying here, but as energies that need integration, okay? There are things that need to be resolved. There are things that need to be integrated and there are things that need to be 
Marie Kondo'd to the curb, right? Not bringing me joy, it's gone. So Carl Jung, one of my favorites, um, said that, and this is his quote, the individual creates a tension of opposites that provides the stimulation which culture needs for further progress. So as you hold the tension of opposites in your life and in your relationships, the only place you can go is forward. So may it be so for you. So understand the tension of the opposites is good because it propels you forward. But then as you move forward, it's like, you know, you got to start throwing things off the back of the boat. You know, you got to lighten your load so you can keep moving forward. Um, I hope that that helps and that you use this opportunity for this last Libra eclipse until 2033 um, to really part with the patterns and the baggage. Um, like, yeah, got it. Don't, I got the memo. I don't need to keep learning these lessons. I don't want to be blocked by these things. I can find forgiveness. I can work on some self-love. And those spreads that I did were very specific. So if you missed it, you can watch for your sign. You can watch for your person's sign. You can watch for any sign that is prominent in your chart, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, or any sign that you really feel may speak to you. There could be a message there for you. So please do that. Now, before I begin the tarot portion, and yes, we're there, I do want to send out a message. Uh, I've been a little preoccupied with my own drama here with Hurricane Helene. Um, I am one of the very lucky ones, I will say. Um, and so, but you know, we get caught up in our own inconveniences. There are many people in our happy little family here of what, 67,000 or something like that. Um, and so I want to send out a lot of love. Please join me in that right now, sending out a lot of love to anyone in our community. First, we're doing concentric circles here. Anyone in our community. That has um, been that has been suffering through that event, which pff, lot millions and millions of people have su been suffering through this. It impacted Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee. Um, if I'm missing anybody, my apologies. Um, a little bit of Kentucky, even I think. So if you get to this reading and you have been without power or internet or Wi-Fi or water or food or even a roof over your head, um, please know that we are all here collectively holding space for you, sending our love to you. Um, I have made donations um, to food banks in your states um, individually. They're small, but I made one in each state to the state food banks because that's who gets you the food as quickly as possible. Um, so if you, have the, if you have it to give, please do if you can. Um, yeah. And now, really, um, to all those impacted, affected, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. It's biblical proportions of nightmares. So, okay. So we're going to do um, our spread here. Of course, there will be an extended where I go around each the zodiac Aries through Pisces. So the link uh, to that will be below. And if you have the all access pass where you get all of the extendeds, you have already paid for this extended, okay? Um, but for those of you who don't have that, there will be a link in the description box below for the extended where you can um, get a mini reading for each individual zodiac sign and it is good for Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, but this is for all signs, um, all zodiac signs here. Let's see what we get for this new moon in Libra with a solar eclipse. It's coming through. Ooh, Knight of Swords, yes. Sense of urgency, didn't I say it? Yeah, quick, fast, in a hurry. We need to clear the air. We need to kind of make sure we understand each other. Yes, perfect. And what, okay, so there's a challenge around this Ace of Swords. That's the challenge is 
Um, it's kind of because it's crossing, it's almost like, you know, it would look like this in the Celtic cross, but I always hold it like this so you can see it as it's, it's a challenge and it's what's crossing you. Spirit gives us, right? The aces are a gift from spirit. So we kind of have to, we have to be ready to receive the, oh, I see, I get it. The Ace of Swords to me is insight. It could be an aha moment. It could just, it could be truth, something being revealed, some knowledge that needs to come in through this Knight of Swords, quick, fast, and in a hurry. He has Seven of Pentacles underneath in unconscious awareness. Um, yeah, it's a patience thing. It's, it's tending to things that are unfolding organically in the past, Four of Swords. Um, some kind of healing that has been underway, maybe taking its time. Yes, look at this, conscious awareness. Just a message from the heart, something sincere, could be an apology that you are consciously aware would go a long way. In the near future, Queen of Wands, getting your power back, reclaiming my power, reclaiming my time. It feels really good. And I am going to pull these few cards. Yes. Um, so we have your message from Spirit High Priestess. It is a focus on your intuition. It is a remembering of your connection to the divine so that you're never far from it. It's like releasing suspicion, releasing the lower vibration, coming back into your connection to the divine through your intuition, what's playing out behind the scenes that you can't see, possibly with your person, the strength card gathering up, you know, their, their strength, courage, and confidence to kind of overcome any obstacles. This may be, be someone um, who really isn't as confident as you may think they are. Um, the outlook going forward, we have the Four of Cups. I'm not sure that it, you know, it might be coming through reversed. You know, the Four of Cups is, is a focus on disappointment, disillusionment, things that aren't really kind of falling into place, feeling some, some level of emotional distance. It may be coming through reverse. We'll see what lands on it with the clarifiers. Here we go. Yep, 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 yep. What you can learn here is, you know, the possibility of a return, happiness, like this isn't the time to kind of give up or throw in the towel. Um, there's this sense of urgency to clear the air, but you kind of have to uh, reach out your hand and take the truth of the situation. Be open to hearing it, receiving that truth. Someone wants to come in, someone wants to return. There's a lot of happiness attached to it if you don't throw in the towel too soon. Now, a lot of you got messages, <coughs> excuse me, in your shadow readings that there's, there are patterns here, a pattern of the in and out. So this will be your time to discern to discern what is true for you. Will this return really make you happy? Or is it something you've been healing from from the last time they, do you see what I'm saying? So for some of you, this is an important moment <coughs> where what might be true for you is that all you really want is an apology and I'm taking back, I'm reclaiming my time, I'm reclaiming my power and then I'm, I'm moving on. So for some of you, it is sort of a persevering through it and a return that makes you happy. For others, it's like, this is the moment. This is the moment of truth where I break a pattern. It is a general reading, not a private reading. So you have to take it as it resonates for you. I do offer private readings. There is always a link behind, below every video. You just have to scroll a little bit and it will take you to the booking page. See the Seven of Pentacles? Yes, so while you're patiently waiting, 
it, yeah, we've got all kinds of worries and insecurities. It's hard to trust your intuition when you've got, you know, fear about somebody's emotional availability or lack thereof, and then kaboom. So in unconscious awareness, what happens is the longer it takes for either this person to return or not, right? And if they return, is it just for, you know, the purposes of getting their own needs met or are they coming in with some kind of emotional availability for you? And that's why the moon is here. It's like there, it's the unknown, the fear of the unknown. It's very triggering. It leaves you with lots of uncertainty and apprehension. The longer the wait, the more your mind goes to, you know, um, catastrophe. You know, so I'm not saying the tower is a happening thing. I'm pulling that from the bottom of the deck. So it's an unconscious awareness. It's not, it's not like it's a, it's happening now, but it's a fear that it could happen. So let's see this four of swords in the past. Well, we have the Hierophant, the Judgment, and the Two of Cups. So I'm guessing there may have been some commitment issues, maybe promises that weren't kept or commitments that were broken or violated, um, second chances, forgiveness, redemption within this connection, but they're all clarifying the Four of Swords, which is coming through to me as some healing. Um, and so I'm feeling like that's why the page of cups is in your conscious awareness is it's coming through more as apology. There's the ace of swords, six of wands, reconciliation. So almost as if this knight of swords where I said the sense of urgency to clear the air and what's crossing it is the, is the Ace of Swords. And, and if you know, I don't know if you notice, but in this deck, the Light Seer's Tarot, it's, this is the Page of Cups. The cup is here, right? This guy is sitting and his little legs are hanging over, but his feet you see in the top and there's the cup and there's a little teeny piglet with wings flying over the cup and I always, when I see this card, I say, yeah, they'll apologize when pigs fly. Swear to gosh, that's what I say. When I see it, it makes me think that thought. And then I'm seeing the Ace of Swords, that's the challenge for you, and that's what I feel like you're saying. Yeah, mm-hmm, I'll believe it when I see it. That's why the Ace of Swords is a challenge. In your conscious awareness, you're like, yeah, I'll, 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 yep, I'll get that apology when pigs fly. But then we have the Six of Wands, which is that card of reconciliation, of making peace. And underneath, then you'll have an important decision to make. Right? Do I persevere? Do I let them back in? Does this bring me happiness? Or am I... Am I going to say, thank you for the apology, you are forgiven, but I'm moving on, right? Like, it's going to be different for each person. Because what we're trying to do here is stop patterns, is release the past, is some of us are going to release the grudge we're holding, right? And we're going to let bygones be bygones, and we're going to make nice and forge sort of an alliance with the person and meet in the middle and say, okay, yes, I can forgive this and we can continue to move forward in our connection. Others of us are not going to be able to do that because the insults to our integrity and our honor and our sense of that worth and value are too much, right? So that's why I'm saying there are a lot of you here and it, you have to take it as it speaks to you. Whoop, don't do that. I'm going to reshuffle because I was very excitable. Queen of Wands in the near future. Ah, Strength card. Five of Swords. Hanged Man. 
So while you're here, taking back your power, <laughs> and you know, it's a this is a card of overcoming obstacles, sure, but it's also like getting your game face on. I said the same thing for this person, but the obstacle and what you're reclaiming your power from is um, maybe being gaslighted, uh, some some literal game playing manipulations etc underneath is the hangman so for those of you who are new um welcome when i'm pulling from the bottom of the deck it's it's your it's what's happening internally it's your unconscious awareness so like what's in your psyche or something playing out behind the scenes in this case i feel it's like that part of you that's like i i, I need some enlightenment here so i'm not going to take any action and the reason why that's important is because she's an action taker that queen of wands doesn't mess around she go 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 she's she's aries energy she's you know cardinal startup move move and with that that power of the strength card but she's coming up against something that has been a force against her in this connection for a while right so i love seeing the hangman there saying whoa 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 Press pause, right? Look before you do anything. Make sure you've got all the information you need. Get the 30,000 foot view from a safe vantage point. Wait for the enlightenment. So it's an interesting thing that on an internal level, you may be getting your game face on and reclaiming your power against something that you don't trust the intentions of, or someone I should say. But you won't take action too quickly because you'll want to be sure you're looking at it accurately, that you're seeing it clearly. Ace of Swords, Ace of Swords, seeing it clearly with fresh eyes. This is a perspective card. And so Spirit's message, High Priestess, Ooh, ooh, yes trust your intuition yeah don't um don't let your ego get in the way too much um there's a lot of heavy built up negative karma here spirits say trust your intuition don't let you know great be the enemy of good the so nine of cups can be very good energy it is a card of wish fulfillment but it's also a card of like a sense of emotional self-satisfaction like a yep this feels good i know my worth and value i i assess the situation that's what this is queen of wands i know my worth and value i'm assessing the situation and then i'm going to be proud of myself but doesn't it even look like i'm proud of myself yep i did it I did it. I came through it. I trusted my intuition. So this is Spirit's message. And this is a card of relief. Release and relief. Like I can finally let all this go. And then with the devil underneath, it can be something playing out behind the scenes. But it feels more like, you know how we kind of have angel devil? You know, that's, that part of us inside that gets insecure. That part of us that, you know... We're so habituated to behaving in a certain way that it kind of gnaws at us a bit. Well, I like that it's sort of from the bottom of the deck. It's not running the show anymore, but it will, it will present a challenge. It will be hard to offload a lot of this. And you're just going to have to beat it back with your intuition, which is a much higher vibration. Okay, so at least you're getting a little hint that this is not easy business. It's definitely gonna be a little challenging. And we will be looking at the month of October tomorrow. I will do the October 2024 monthly Love Tarot Energy Update. So I take the month week by week and we may see where this energy comes in and how it impacts us, okay? So behind the scenes, what you can't see with your person, strength card, You know how many times, whoop, how many times this card came out in the shadow readings? Like almost in every one there was a, especially in the extendeds, there, 
was the person that you were there to watch about going, ah, ah, oh, I don't know. Um, yeah, here it is again. So behind the scenes, what you can't see is your person with the temperance card landing on strength. It's sort of like them giving themselves a little grace. Um, they're not feeling very confident. Uh, they're not feeling put together, you know? And so temperance is almost like going with the flow. And I, I like that they're operating from some self-control and restraint. So that's good. Um, taking a little time to reflect. Uh, maybe a little healing might be needed, but it's coming through more as reflection because internally we have the two of pentacles. This is somebody who doesn't make decisions very easily or doesn't stick to them. Um, and the two of pentacles can be a stalling technique, right? Like where we go like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of stalling for time here or they're really undecided about something. Yeah. So we have some timing references here. Temperance is like, I'm going to go with the flow and in time, all the energies will come into flow and balance and the four of swords, I'm giving it a lot of deep thought. And then internally, I'm really kind of on the fence. So um, I do feel like this person, whoever it is that you're dealing with and, you know, we're human, they, they're sort of not as confident as they portray themselves or whatever has happened here, you're getting stronger and more self-assured and that's throwing them off. So be it. So the outlook going forward, Four of Cups... Yeah, like I said, um, I feel it's coming through reversed, right? Sort of what you can anticipate, I'm seeing it reversed. So instead of the emotional despair, the sense of distance, the disappointment, the disillusionment, the feelings of rejection, I'm going to hold it upside down because what you're manifesting, it's a new moon, is an end of that and this beautiful ten of cups like i've come through that and now i'm feeling the what's coming toward me is my happiness is my opportunity for a happily ever after and underneath is the hermit i'm wiser now i have done my work i have gone within i have become more introspective because I sat through Laura's crazy ass shadow <laughs> readings and I listened and I grokked it and I did the work and I understand the power of this lunar cycle and I get it and I know that I had to do that by myself because nobody could do it for me, right? That's sort of what I'm feeling is you are becoming your own guide in this process. And so remember when I said, where is it? I'm going to read it to you again, where it said, this eclipses square to Mars. Mars is in Cancer. And he's not happy there because he is very action oriented and Cancer's like, let me, well, no, this is very emotional and we need to be nurtured and Mars, no, right? So it's difficult energy. This is Cancerian looking, right? Very forlorn, very sad, very wounded. Okay, it says, this eclipse is square to Mars and Cancer suggests we must take more responsibility for our emotional states, recognizing what is ours to feel and heal. And so you did the freaking work. And now you get the rewards manifest the rewards because you went inside and you did the work that is the outlook and you should be very happy okay so that is what i have for you this went a little long i'm going to give you some of the astrology that showed up here and then you know the link below is to the extended um, where i go through all the signs little mini readings so <clears throat> if you've enjoyed this, and I hope that you have, um, please, if you haven't by now, subscribe below. And um, that really is what I ask for. I don't care about all the other vanity metrics. It's the subscriptions that mean the most to me. Okay, so we have the Knight of Swords, and the Knight of Swords is Gemini. 
We have the Knight of Wands, Sagittarius. The sun is the sun, rules the sign of Leo. We have the moon is um, Pisces. King of Cups is uh, Scorpio. And the tower is Mars, which rules Aries. We have the Hierophant is Taurus. Judgment is Pluto, which rules Scorpio. Page of Cups, all the water signs, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Are we noticing how the water, the trine that I told you about is coming into this? Queen of Wands is Aries. The Strength card is out twice, that's Leo. Hanged Man is Neptune, which rules Pisces. High Priestess is, believe it or not, the High Priestess, I always thought she was Pisces. She happens to be the moon. All the moon symbols on her and I never thought about it. She's the moon and the moon rules cancer. Yes, I was corrected by my favorite. Um, I, I have a special book that I study with and it, the author corrected me. Okay, um, the devil is Capricornian energy. We have temperance is more Sagittarian energy. Um, and the hermit is Virgo. So that's what I have for you and I'm headed over to the extended. Hope to see you there, guys. New moon in Libra, solar eclipse, blessings to one and all. Bye for now.